Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That comes from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7. So based off of this scripture, we see that love is much deeper than a feeling and is mainly shown through our actions. If we want to connect with God and others on a deeper level, we need to gain a better understanding of love. Join us in the month of February as we dive back into Romans to learn how we can best connect with God and with one another. All right, so we're going to be in Romans 13. You can uh, pull up the events page if you want on version, and we'll be there as well. Uh, but a little bit, uh, we're uh, I'm going to kind of poke the bear a little bit this morning. You know how you're not supposed to talk about religion and politics, and this morning I'm going to talk about both. We're going to, we're going to blend them together a little bit. Uh, on January the 6th of this year, Uh, A bunch of mostly white guys, middle-class men, rioted in Washington, D.C. and attacked our Capitol building. Um, They were not the brightest tools in the shed. I don't think one one way you could put it, I heard just uh, recently, is I don't think their cornbread was cooked all the way through. Um, Because they, they took pictures of themselves. They posted what they were doing. And because they don't believe in wearing masks, they weren't even hidden. I mean, how's this going to go? That ain't me. Really? Yes, it is. Well, you got a twin? I mean, it wasn't very smart. You know, violence, I'm making fun of it a little bit, but violence is never good. And people lost their lives on January the 6th. Um, On that day, the Confederate flag flew in the U.S. Capitol building. Think of the thousands of men and women who fought a battle so that that would never happen. And yet, January 6th of 2021, it did. There were other flags that flew that day, other than the United States flag. There was the Trump flag. It flew. There was a Jesus flag or two that flew in the Capitol building that day. Now, you you remember those bands that said, what would Jesus do? Now, I've said before, and I'll say it again, I don't think it's very easy. I don't think it's It's even smart for us to try to figure out what Jesus would say sometimes about things going on in our culture. But the people who attacked our Capitol building and then took the Jesus flag inside the Capitol building, I think they need some of those bracelets. And I think they need to rethink their theology. Because I I feel fairly confident in saying that Jesus would not have attacked the Capitol building. Now, I don't know very many people who are my friends on social media or anything who have actively publicly supported the actual riot. But I I think that there are plenty of men and women who I know and who are probably listening and watching this they are okay with it. On January the 20th, the inauguration of President Biden, uh, in our own Clinton Central High School and junior high, there were active conversations about how that man should be assassinated. That was the government discussion that was taking place in our high school. First of all, it was allowed. When I was that age, I was always scared that if you said things like that, the Secret Service was going to come visit you. 
But now they post this stuff. They openly talk about this stuff. And they, they said, you know, that we should, we, he should just be shot. And this is our high school kids and our junior high kids having these conversations. Other people I know refuse to watch the inauguration out of frustration, and I understand that. I do. Some of it watched it out of a lack of interest. That one I definitely understand. But some out of fear. That one I don't understand. Not for someone who calls himself a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because see, our sovereignty, our, um, where we get our courage is from God. No government, no president has ever been my savior, nor should we be, be looking to the government for our courage, for our uh, salvation, our protection, or our provision. That always comes from the Lord. We look to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. We look to God the Father, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we're to seek his word, his will, and his way. And so this morning, I believe we're going to have some tough lessons to swallow about politics and authority and our role as disciples. And we're going to be in Romans 13, if you want to get there. Um, we, we were in Romans for most of 2020. And we took a break because of Christmas and then uh, January, I wanted to get into the one church, one year, one mission thing. And now we're, we're coming back. We're going to finish up Romans. And before we get into Romans 13, let's, let's, I just want to remind you what Paul was talking about in Romans 12. And we spent an entire month just on this chapter. And, and he talked all about love and service and, and humility. And he started saying things like, you know, rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony, live at peace with anyone With one another, do not be proud, do not be conceited, do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Do not be overcome by evil, but but overcome evil with good. Those are the last words that we discussed back in November. And so now we're getting ready to go into to, to Romans 13, and I, I, want us to, I want us to remember a clear picture of what's happening here <clears throat> and where the context is coming from, because I think it really does play a role in how we understand politics and what Paul is saying. You have to remember Paul, a disciple of Jesus Christ, was writing to people who lived in the heart of the Roman Empire. Christians had zero authority. They had no power, and they were hated by everyone. The Jews didn't like them. The Romans didn't like them. They had nothing going their way except for Jesus. And so Paul, he's writing to them, and he's, he's getting ready to give them these really powerful words that we're going to discuss. And I just want us to understand That these people had nothing. And here we are in America today, and we're the land of the free. And I mean, most of us, we have warm homes. We we had to look through our closet to choose what we were going to wear. We have nice vehicles. I mean, we're in pretty good shape. And so, right as we're getting ready to start hearing about authority, according to Paul... Uh, we're going to do something a little different this morning and, and uh, be interesting to see uh, if you guys do this online. But we're going to show some honor to the authority of God's word this morning. Some of you may come from a, a church that has done this um, in the past or, or even as a tradition. But this morning, to show the authority of God's word, I want you to stand as we read God's word. So stand with me. And I'm going to read Romans 13, 1 through 7. 
And we're just going to honor God's word, the authority, because <clears throat> as disciples of Jesus Christ, our authority is the scriptures. And so let everyone be subject <clears throat> to the governing authorities, for there is no authority established which God has, in which God has. There is no authority except what, that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience." This is why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. So saith the Lord. Have a seat. So we heard those words. You know, submission, submit, authority, and all that stuff. So what I've pulled out is, I believe, it's just a few lessons for us to pull out of that this morning. The first one, and, and I want you to understand before we actually say it, uh, I have been trained in counseling. And so one of the first lessons I learned in counseling is that never, never use 100% words. Get that? Never use 100% words. 100% words are always, every, never, uh, all the time, every time. You know, don't use them in your marriage. Don't use them with your kids because, you know, we, we never do everything all the time. And but that's how arguments start. Well, you, you always leave your socks on the floor. Well, not always. Sometimes I put them on the bed. I mean, I don't always put them away. That's probably true. But your kids, your, your spouse, they don't always do anything. We're human. We're not perfect. We can't even get mistakes right. I mean, we can't, we can't even fail all the time. Sometimes we actually win. So anyway, we never use 100% words. But God is not human. He is divine. He can use 100% words. Our first lesson is that this applies to every. One. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities above us. He gets to use 100% words. He's sovereign. He can say that. So, uh, we have elected, 81 million people voted for President Biden. He is above us. He is our authority. I, uh, years ago, signed up to be part of the presidential prayer team. That was under George W. Bush. I have prayed, I wasn't a pastor then, and you can do this, so you can go online and you can sign up. I've prayed through President Bush, President Obama, President Trump, and now I am praying for President Biden. Because you know what? 81 million people voted for him. And he is our president. 66.7% of eligible voters in our country voted. They voted for him. 61% of Hoosiers voted. So that means that six out of 10 people have a right to say something. If you did not vote, do not whine. I have two words for you. Vote next time. That's three. Here's my two words, shut up. If you, if you did not vote, you cannot complain. It just doesn't work that way. And for the, he's not my president crowd. Yes, he is. We're Americans. 
He's our president. And you better be on your knees praying for him that he is successful because you know what? He's piloting the ship we're on. He is the commander of chief to the men and women who are protecting our country. So you better be praying that he's doing a good job. Because he is our president. And he is the authority that God has allowed to be over us. And he didn't ask our opinion. Did he? For many of us. The next thing is that we always do right. Says there holds no fear. The authorities hold no fear for those who do right, but only for those who do wrong. I think we all experience this. You're just driving down the road and you see that police car. You're like, okay. Because you were doing wrong and you had fear. I'm going to throw my wife under the bus for a second. I gave her, I got permission. When we were in Oklahoma, um, everything was 35, 45 minutes away from our little town out in the middle of nowhere. And our very first um, baseball game that we had to go to, we were running late. I was driving. You can be late for church, you can be late for school, you can be late to work. You cannot be late for baseball. And so I got pulled over. Still had my Indiana driver's license. So this police officer, he's like, so, you know, where are you headed? And I told him, he said, well, where do you live? And I told him. And he said, how long you live there? And I said, about 30 days. He said, um well, what do you do? What, mo- what brought you to Ames? I said, I'm the pastor of the local church. And he handed me my license back and he says, thank you so much for what you do. He leaned in and said to my wife, thank you for supporting him and what he does. And he said, just go on. And I'm like, I drove off. I'm like, I just got the pastor pass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a couple months later, we we're going to a new place that we had never been. I, we were paying a cl- attention to the directions. I pulled off we were, we, and we, we stopped at a stoplight and I, I pulled out. We went on. I got pulled over again. And the guy's like, do you know why I pulled you over? And I, I, I said, we were just left a stoplight. I said, I have no idea. And he's like, well, you accelerated really fast. I'm like, dude, I'm in a minivan. <laughs> <sighs> you know, I didn't get the pastor pass, but I didn't get a ticket. Now, my wife also got pulled over two times in the great state of Oklahoma. She cost us $500 in tickets and an increase in our um, insurance. She tried to pull the pastor's wife thing. It just, there's no pastor's wife pass apparently in Oklahoma. But when we, when we do wrong, we have to worry about Paying the penalty, don't we? And so, but we're, we're called to always do right. It was a 100% word again. It says also another lesson here is that we are to, we as disciples of Jesus Christ, we answer to Jesus. Because he says, therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. See, anybody and everybody, they will toe the line because they're afraid of being punished. We, no one wants to be punished. But to disciples, to people who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we answer a higher calling. Because we, we, we submit to our authorities, we do right, because one day we know that we have to answer to Jesus for what we've done. And so we have to, we have to listen to our, our conscience. We have to listen to the, the Holy Spirit who is prompting us and pleading us, don't do it. Don't do that. And so one way I, I just, just, I'm going to throw this out there. 
Before you post something, pray about it. Let the Holy Spirit say, sure you want to post that? Sure you want to like that? The last little section here, the last lessons that we could be learning is our actions towards one another. See, it says that we're Uh, We are God's, for they are God's servants. And so we're to give to everyone what we owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. And so there's that 100% word again, everybody. So we're supposed to pay our taxes, even if we don't like it. And trust me, I don't. We're supposed to pay our bills. If we owe somebody, then pay them what we owe them. Do you know what it really says to people who don't do business with, um, let me me rephrase this a different way. Most of us, we live in a small community. And so if we're not honest in paying our bills to the people that we do business with who are local people, they know where you go to church. They know that they, you call yourself a Christian and they know you do not pay your bills. So what are you saying about your Savior? If you're supposed to pay, we're supposed to pay respect, we're supposed to pay honor to everyone. And I know it's challenging, especially in a big open cult world like we live in, but we are. One of the best reasons for me personally, and this, take this however you want, one of the reasons that I stay off social media as much as I do is so I can love you and not hate you. Because some, of, some people say some things that if I, if I let that play into my heart, I, I would have a real difficult time treating you with the honor and respect and the love that I should. Because yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm also human. And so we, we, have to, we have to love and respect one another. And so we are supposed to honor one another today. And so how? How do we do this? Well, it begins with us. It begins in our hearts. And, and so let me give you some things that I think are very practical things that we try to do in our house and our, what I try to do as a disciple. And I'm I'm not perfect, so I'm not saying I do any of these things all the time. But before we turn on the news or look at our phone, let's start every morning with bending our knees. We have to submit to the king before we turn on the world and see what's going on. Before we say something political, let's think of something praiseworthy. Philippians 4, verse uh, 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. What are we, what are we putting into our mind? What are we thinking about? What are we focusing on? Who are we focusing on? And so before we worry, let's worship. Before we rant, let's read. Let's start in the Word. And I, I want to I wanna make this a very practical thing right now. We're going to use a case study. Because in our world, there's a lot of emotional, uh, hot-button topics. Uh, under current circumstances, the current environment... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick one for today, and that's abortion. Uh, there's so many we could touch on. It's, it's Black History Month, so we could talk about racism. Uh, we could talk about, you know, gender, uh, orient, uh, gender identity, sexual orientation, um, the homelessness, immigration, the environment. Uh, any number of, of these topics we could touch on. And how we respond to people in our culture as disciples of Jesus Christ. But 
this morning, let's just talk about abortion. It's been a, it's been a hot button here recently. And uh, so, and I, and I want to tell you uh, very honestly and openly that I have not always done a good job of, of keeping abortion uh, as something that we discuss and we actively uh, dis- support fighting. But when we talk about something like abortion, and as disciples of Jesus Christ, I think what we need to remember that we have to lo- show love and grace. It is a horrible thing, but we have to care about the person, the woman who feels that this is her only choice. And so instead of protesting, we need to be in prayer. And, and you, did you know that you could do that? Uh, even as close as Lafayette, you can go. There's a, a Planned Parenthood up th- place up there, and there's a, a group that will help you go and stand and silently pray just outside the building. Did you know you could do that? And so the other thing, and this is, this is kind of challenging considering I just said we're gonna, the Bible is our authority. When we have these discussions, we do not use biblical arguments. Because, see, the Bible is our authority. And so when we want to engage with people in our culture, if we want to engage with someone who's broken and hurting, you show empathy from your heart, not from your, the word that is, you know, you want to use the word, and I understand that, but it doesn't, it's not their authority. They may not even believe it, and they may be against it, and someone may have beat them with the Bible in the past, both physically and hypothetically. And so we just need to do some good things to show love and grace and mercy. We think globally, but we act locally. I, uh, I just received some letters this week, uh, Living Alternatives in Frankfurt. Um, they're, they're looking for sponsorships, and as a church, we sponsor but they're, they're seeking $3,000 in sponsorship. They're trying. They're just trying to get $3,000 in sponsorship. You know what? We could leave today, and the people in this room, we could give $3,000 and meet their sponsorship goals today if we wanted to. They're having a virtual walk in April. March, April. I think it's April. Anyway. This, this church, we could put together a big team. We got a lot of people who are walking anyway. We could put a lot of people together, and we could walk together. And see, that's a positive thing that we could do. But I do want us, though, when we talk about things like this, we need to pray more than we post. We need to humble ourselves, and we need to, to kneel down and bow before our king. And you know... We have to remember that there are people, and I'm sure, I am sure that there's at least, I I would say, I'm going to say five. I have no idea. I bet there's at least five women who are watching this or listening to my voice who have had an abortion. It's within our own family. So, are we not going to show these people love and grace? Are we going to hold this against them? Do, we don't want to beat them up. We want to show them love and grace. And we need to figure out ways that we can prayerfully take care of this situation in such a way that we put families together and we put couples together and we stop it at the core and instead of beating people up so badly over the result. And when all we do is fight and argue and bicker, We're working against the mission of Jesus Christ. And so I want us to engage in private conversations instead of public controversies. Let's engage with people in gospel discussions instead of emotional outbursts. See, our our mission, our mission as a church, our mission as disciples of Jesus Christ is not to change political viewpoints, but it's to save people. 
We're to win souls and make disciples, not to win arguments and make those really good points. In our, in our Bible, in the Word of God, we have, we have letters from two half-brothers of Jesus, James and Jude. They would have both been raised in the same house as Jesus. And in their letters, the last words that they wrote to the people who were going to read the last words. It's always, how do you finish a letter? How do you finish a life? What is, what is, it's powerful, the last things you say. And listen to these last words of James. My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. See, he's saying the most important thing. The last thing I want you to hear is let's save people and cover over a multitude of sins. And then Jude, Jude, he writes this, be merciful to those who doubt, save others by snatching them from the fire to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupt flesh. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. See, we're to save souls, make disciples. That's our mission. And so any of those things that we've talked about, you know, whether it's homosexuality or, or boys confused about whether they're girls and what bathroom, all those things that we can make fun of and struggle with, make political, we're actually supposed to make them into gospel conversations and help people. We're supposed to save them from the fire, literally but it starts with us offering love and grace and knowing that your pastor is watching what you post on social media. All right, let's pray. Father God, we love you so very much. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Help us to have a heart to save others, to save people. Lord, Things like abortion and, and, and all these other political issues, um, Lord, it's, they're hot topics, and they're emotional, and uh, we, we get our country before our God, and we get things out of whack, and, and so, Lord, just forgive us of that. Lord, we're, we're human. We're not going to be perfect. But help us to take our next step to be uh, going in the right direction to help us to, to show love and grace to ourselves and to others and help us to remember that you are our great authority. Thank you for your word that can lead us and teach us and, and show us how to love and honor one another. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.